These are the treasure houses of an ancient desert kingdom, a land the size of Western Europe, where rainfall is a near miracle and oil flows like water. The world's largest oil reserves are here in Saudi Arabia, so it's hardly surprising that a gallon of petrol costs less than two shillings. Cheap, maybe, but there's no one-way route to luxury living in this scorching corner of the earth. Saudi Arabia, despite its potential wealth, is a country that needs help and guidance. Why else would a group of prominent English surgeons and specialists hurry away from London's shivering climate to board an aircraft bound for a land where winter merely means the temperature drops below the century mark? Organized by the International Cultural Exchange, the visit is designed to advise and encourage the still inadequate Saudi medical service. And whether it's a hospital in London or the capital Riyadh, the urgency for expert attention is just as great. Perhaps more so here, where there are no qualified heart, plastic, chest or neurosurgeons. Such is the desperate need of a people who live alongside almost unimaginable riches. Eye infections are so common that operations are often performed in the patient's home. Many sufferers can be cured if treated at an earlier stage. And for one young Arab prince, examination by an English specialist may prevent the tragedy of blindness. Prince or pauper, the queue of patients is endless. Operations are performed not only to save lives, but to instruct and encourage Saudi Arabian doctors to stamp out some frightening diseases in a country where many adults die before they are 40. Even to get a prescription, patients must first buy a bottle at the curbside. A stream of Arabs shuffling forward for hospital treatment is perhaps primitive to Western eyes. These people seem to accept the waiting and the unimportance of time, probably because time can be based on any one of three systems, all hours different from each other. And that's only one frustration for the traveler. He can get lost in a maze of narrow, high-walled city streets where time seems to have passed by altogether. An innocent game in a dusty street can be a threat to health, yet children seem to ignore the dangers out in the thirsty heat. But no, this tour back into history and legend is jolted forward into the 20th century by the sight of Saudi Arabia's latest landmark, the TV studios. And there's almost a big screen atmosphere about a visit to the palace of King Faisal, the immensely rich monarch of this desert kingdom. Today, the man who has absolute power over his five million subjects is meeting the doctors who have come to help his people. Decisions made on this occasion will push Saudi Arabia a little further along the road to healthy prosperity. But the Bedouins, who now go by lorry instead of camel, still eke out a frugal existence from the unfriendly desert, as they've done for centuries. Somehow the nomadic tribes manage to survive in this scorching sea of sand. The oil beneath means nothing to their unchanging way of life. The heavily veiled women still spin goat's hair to weave the walls of their tented homes. The Bedouins are a fierce, proud people, often resisting attempts at resettlement. They wander across an uncharted wilderness, ignoring the extremes of temperature. Tribal customs are always upheld. Girls have to be veiled when they reach 12, the marriageable age. There is, of course, the high-style Bedouin life tasted by the off-duty doctors. Wines and spirits are forbidden in the country, so coffee takes on the importance of a pre-feast aperitif. Drinking goes on until a little shake of the empty cup signifies enough. All the Bedouin courtesies and rituals are observed. You take off your shoes before sitting down to a communal dish of roast sheep dressed with rice and whole chickens. 
the idea being to tear away at the meat and roll it into balls of rice. A feast fit for a king. But this time it's Prince Abdullah in the place of honor. It's difficult to imagine how the wealth from oil could possibly reshape the lives of these desert nomads. The goat market is much the same as it was in the days when the whole country was just a blank on the map. It might not be everyone's idea of super shopping, but there's certainly no better place to collect a few tasty desert lizards for supper. Saudi Arabia cannot ignore or escape the domination of the desert, yet there are isolated places where it blossoms into jungle lushness. An oasis like this, carefully irrigated, can produce root crops and a rich date harvest. Here indeed is proof that the desert can be made fertile. It's a favorite site for tribes who pitch their tents in such unexpected greenery. Some even build small huts for a longer escape from the open desert. Modern civilization has edged in as well because among the swaying palms is a swimming pool. And that's no mirage. A land of too little water and too much oil. That would probably describe the dilemma of a country which is only just realizing its importance in the 20th century. Those treasure houses in the desert may represent great future wealth, but that's not enough. Saudi Arabia needs expert advice and encouragement. Just in fact what the doctors ordered, and by their goodwill example, underlined. <laughs> 